before we start actually coding using the OpenAI Agents SDK, I want to show you guys how to set up everything. Feel free to skip this video if you already know how to do all of this stuff, but in this video I'll be showing you guys how to set up a local Python environment, how to install dependencies, how to create a Jupyter Notebook and run it, how to create an OpenAI API key, and then how to set it up with a local .env file that you can grab in the notebook. So if you don't know any of that, or maybe you know some of it, this video should be very useful for you. So I'll just show you the basics. So first of all, this is VS Code. You can use any IDE that you prefer, such as PyCharm, whatever you want to use, right? But VS Code is a very popular option. And usually the very first thing that you want to do when setting up a new Python project is to set up an environment. There's a bunch of different ways that you can do that. There's different things like Anaconda and stuff like that, but we're just going to use a standard local Python environment. So just first open up a terminal to your project's root directory. Just make sure you have Python. So Python-V, I don't know why it spams all this, but you can see that my version is 3.12. So just make sure you have a modern version of Python like 3.11 or 12 or anything close to that or above that should be fine. So to create your local Python environment, do Python-MVENV, which stands for virtual environment, and then give it a name. So commonly you just call it VENV as well. So we're simply creating a new virtual environment called VENV. That will do it. So it's gonna be represented by this folder here. So whenever you commit anything to Git, for example, to a Git repository, make sure you ignore this file. This is something that should be only local to your computer. Now, once you have your Python environment set up, before you install any packages at all, you need to activate the environment or else they'll be installed globally on your computer. So on Linux or Mac, you can run it by using the source command. So source venv or your environment name, slash bin, slash activate. On Windows though, you can do slash venv scripts activate. And now it's activated. So you know it's activated simply because it shows the environment name in the terminal. So if you don't see that, you should be a little concerned usually. Okay, so now we're good to go to actually install packages. So when you're installing packages for a Python project, there's two ways you can do it, or there's more than two, but two of the major ways that we can do it in this tutorial series is by installing it using pip. So pip install and then the package name. So we could do, for example, open AI agents. This is actually the name of the package that will bring in the Python library for the open AI agents SDK. So let's run it. So this will install it locally and all its dependencies to our Python a virtual environment that we just created. So that will give us everything that we need. Let's also install another package called pip install python.env. This will allow us to bring in a .env file to get environmental variables. I'll show you that in a second. So one thing that you can do that's very helpful when you have a Python environment is to create a new file called requirements.txt within the same directory. And inside of here, you simply list all of the packages that your project depends on. So for example, we could do the one that we just installed, which is OpenAI agents and also python.env. The benefit of having a file like this, the requirements file, is that whenever uh, you install this project from fresh, maybe you clone it from GitHub or somebody else's project, you now have a way of knowing all the different dependencies that the project depends on. So now anytime I want to install a Python package, I can either run the command manually to install it, or I can add it first to my requirements and then install everything and keep everything up to date by doing pip install dash r requirements. So this will install automatically any requirements that you don't already have from that file. All right, so that's how you can set up a local Python environment and also set up your Python dependencies. Now let's go ahead and see how we can make a Python notebook. So first of all, within VS Code, there is an extension for this. It may not be installed already. So just go to extensions and then go to, and then just search Jupyter, Jupyter. It's called Jupyter. So click Jupyter. And this is gonna be essentially an extension pack of a bunch of different uh, extension that you can install. So just install it and this will give you everything that you need. Okay. Let's create our very first notebook. We'll call it hello.ipynb. So Python notebook. I'm assuming if you're watching this, you know what a notebook is, but I'll just give you a basic overview. You can create code cells, which has Python code and then markdown cells for documentation. So you could have stuff like hello world, and then you could display that like that. It actually renders as a cool documentation text, or you can print hello. But as you can see, there's no syntax highlighting here because what we have to do every single time we create a notebook, we need to target the notebook onto our local Python environment or something else. So we'll do Python environments and then select the local one, not the one for your entire computer. So it'll be this one, VNV scripts, Python, select that one. And now you can see the syntax highlighting because it does recognize your local Python version and your dependencies. Now we can run this code cell by clicking the play button. And now it's going to ask you if you want to automatically install this IPy kernel package to your Python environment so that I can actually run the notebook. So let's do that. It makes it really easy for us that it does it automatically. There it is, it's done. So I printed hello, I ran the code. So that's how I can create a Python notebook and run some code inside of it. We're gonna be using these a lot to 
learn how to use the library. Now, the third way to install Python packages is directly in the notebook. So you may see me do this sometimes just to make it clear what I'm installing. So a way to do this is you do percent sign and then the command pip install and then the package name. So I could again do open AI agents. So what this will do is since the notebook is targeted to my local Python environment, if I run this, this will install the package if it's not already installed in my local Python environment. Really the only downside of doing it like this is that you lose track of what you may have installed in certain notebooks. It's kind of better to just install them in your, or write them down in your requirements and then do that command I showed you to install everything in your requirements so that you ensure that every notebook has access to all the dependencies that it needs. All right, so since we're using OpenAI's Agents SDK, behind the scenes it's gonna use their models by default, which is great, it makes it easy for us. So what I'm gonna do now is show you guys how to obtain an API key and then how to store it as an environmental variable on your computer so that when we run our code, it's able to grab the API key and actually use it so that you can run models yourself, okay? So first things first, go to platform.openai.com. Just, just make an account or sign in using Google, it's pretty easy. Once you have done that, then go to settings. Once you've done that, then go to billing and just make sure that you have some credits here, like add a couple dollars because these models are really cheap. So I would say if you if you have the money, just add like five bucks and that's gonna last you a very long time because they're so cheap. So just add a payment method, add a couple bucks or or maybe a dollar, just, you know, not a lot of money. Doing this will give you access to actually run the model. So we can get an API key, but that doesn't mean you can actually run any models because it costs money. So once you do that, you can then go to API keys. Now let's add the key, so we'll click create a secret key. So just give it a name. Uh, a common thing that you can do is just have a different key for different projects. So if you ever need to delete the API key, it will only delete it for that project and you'll know which project it's for, not for like your whole computer or whatever, okay? so. Either create a key for your entire computer or for a specific project. It doesn't really matter. Just give it an informative name like, I don't know, potato. After that, you can set some permissions like all or restrict them to specific models and capabilities. So if you want to lock it down, you can. Make sure you also click default project and then click create key. So now make sure that you copy this right away because if you close this, it will be hidden forever. You'll have to create a new one to see it again. So copy this and now we want to put it somewhere safe. We're going to put it directly in our project so we can start using it right away. So go back to your project, and what you want to do is create a new file called .env. It's literally just .env. It's a local environment file. There's no actual name. It's just the extension, okay? It's a hidden file. So this is a place where you can store your local environmental variables for your project. So we can store the OpenAI API key, equal sign, and then paste it. Paste the one that you just grabbed from OpenAI. So it has to have this name, by the way. Make sure it's OpenAI API key with underscores because whenever you run any open AI library code using Python or other languages, it's gonna be looking for this key specifically, this environmental variable. So just make sure it's that name, okay? But now we need to set it up so that our Python notebooks can actually grab the environmental variables from the local ENV file. So that's why we installed previously this package here, python.env. This will allow us to do that. So let's go here to our notebook and what you wanna do is to import OS and then also do from.env import load dot env env. First things first, we're gonna call this function load.env, and that's it. So this will literally just load the keys of the environmental variables from the local env file if there is one. And so now when we run any code using the open AI library, it will automatically grab that key uh, and use it. OS is so that you can do this piece of code if you wanna add this. This will just try grabbing it on its own or manually and checking to see if it exists and then it'll raise an error if it doesn't exist. This is just a helpful piece of code you can add to your notebook so that you don't try running any code uh, before making sure that you actually have the key set up. So let's run and see what we get. So nothing happened because it was able to grab the key, but if it wasn't able to, then obviously there would be an exception. So you know that you need to fix this issue before writing any code. Okay, so that's pretty much all I wanna show you guys. This is all the setup that you need to do to get started in this series. So the next part, I'll be showing you guys how to actually get started with the OpenAI Agents SDK. After watching this video, you guys know how to create a Python project, create a local Python environment, install packages, create a Python Jupyter Notebook, create an OpenAI API key, and then set up a local env file so that you can store the api key to be grabbed as an environmental variable hopefully you're excited for the next part stay tuned